Hi, my name is Lina Chea, and I'm a member of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Burlingame. Whether today is your first time, or if you've been a long-time church member, I'd like to welcome you to join us in this morning online service. Also, check out our church website for news, updates, music, and other helpful resources. Thanks again for joining us, and I hope to be able to worship with you in person sometime soon. Have a nice day. Alleluia! Christ is risen! God be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph into your eternal kingdom. Do not leave us comfortless but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to exalt us to that place where your Son has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Here what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know, in truth, that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guided them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, Help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. It's hard to believe that next Sunday will be my last Sunday at St. Paul's, only a week away. And leave-taking can be uh, difficult and lead us to uncertainty. But we're fortunate that we find ourselves today, this very day, liturgically in a moment of leave taking. Actually, this whole season of Easter has been about Jesus talking to his disciples about what it will be like when he leaves or what they need to do when he departs. Now, just to be clear, I am not Jesus, and this is nowhere equal to that story, to those accounts that we hear today, and yet there are resonances about leave-taking and what happens when somebody takes leave. Now, I could tell you a story about somebody taking leave, but I think I'd rather invite you to think in your own life about a time Perhaps recently, perhaps it's just a particularly memorable time when either you had to take leave or somebody took leave from you. Sometimes these leave takings are forced and we can't really find much good in them as when somebody sends a child off to a war zone or one of those parents at the border separates from their child voluntarily because they need them to escape the violence in their homeland. Or just the kind of leave-taking that happens when somebody in our life dies. These are wrenching events which can wound and hurt us. And then there's another kind of leave-taking. 
It's kind of the leave-taking I'm doing, and it's the leave-taking that you would do when you send a child off to college or good friends move away. It's the kind of leave-taking where it's still painful to leave, it's still sad to leave, and yet we know that the leave-taking is necessary for the next steps in life to happen. But Jesus is talking about both these kinds of leave-takings in some ways. His disciples who have been following him around, who have centered their whole lives on him, maybe may not have even imagined that he would ever leave, but he knows he's going. And so he spends these four chapters of John's gospel preparing them, teaching them to love one another, uh, encouraging them to stay together, even when others try to lead them off the path, even though Jesus is gone. And then we get to this chapter, and we have a prayer. It's Jesus' prayer for his disciples before he leaves. And this prayer really has three parts, and I think they're so helpful for us in any of our leave-taking. First of all, Jesus prays, that his friends would be protected. And certainly there's the basic protection of, you know, drive safe when you go where you go, hope you don't run into any bad physical problems wherever you're going. But it's also a prayer for spiritual protection. It's a prayer that they, wherever they are going, or wherever they are with Jesus gone, it's a prayer that they won't that they won't give in to what he calls the world, that they won't give in to despair, that they won't give in to cynicism, that they won't give in to, to hurting other people or violence, that they won't give in to, to out of their frustration or their fear being drawn off that way of love or that path of love. Protect them, Father, in this world. It's the same kind of prayer I might pray as I send my son off to college. And then Jesus prays, not just for protection, but that they would find joy. That they would find joy in their new life apart. Everything that Jesus has taught his disciples has been about the joy of knowing God's love for them the joy of knowing that God is with them wherever they go. And so Jesus, in this last prayer that we hear today, prays for their joy, that their joy might be complete as God is with them, as he is apart for them. And finally, in the first letter of John today, John reminds us of the important end point what it's all about. It's all about life. And so if we were to add that to the, to the prayer that Jesus is praying, we might pray for life. And again, not for just survival, but that in some way in this time of parting, wherever you are and I am, we are apart, that it would always be in the service of finding life. The kind of life that wells up out of the, like the water out of the fountain behind me. The kind of, of life in which we engage fully with ever, whatever challenges God puts before us each day. As we part, don't just survive, but live and find that life that God is giving you. I will indeed miss this place of St. Paul's. I will miss the community that gathers around one another in good times and in bad. I will miss the great wisdom and love that I see in so many of you in this place. But I will be praying I'll be praying for those things I know how to pray for. And I'll also 
be open to what prayer God would give me. And that's the last word I would leave with you. Sometimes we don't, in a moment of parting, even know the right prayer, even know how to pray correctly. So maybe in this next week, in your own life, whatever leave takings you're experiencing in your own life, or as you think about our parish together, perhaps we can be asking together, what is our prayer for one another? Certainly the prayers of protection and joy and life. But what other prayers do we have for one another? Because I know that Jesus prayed when he was getting ready to leave his disciples because he knew that God was ready to do a new work. Let us also pray with that same confidence and that same expectancy as we take leave from one another. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Mark, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. We pray this day for our ministry leaders and all the ways they build up your people for your work in the world. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace in our nation and for the well-being of all people. For those places in the world where conflict is brewing, that peacemakers may prevail and violence may be averted. Pray for peace and justice. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, for those who continue to suffer from COVID-19, for those who are enduring painful treatments for the illnesses. We pray for those afflicted by isolation and loneliness. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Today we pray especially for those on our parish prayer list, for John and Shelley Pasco, Brendan Panita, and his family, Pamela Allen, Charles Vaughn, Jim Hansen, Bonnie Merrick, Christopher, Linda McLaughlin, Diane Miller, the Forrest family, Michelle Sloat, Susan Lawson, Billy Young, Laura Cope, John and Arlene Borgeson, Nate Price, Michelle Blair, Nan Casulos, Tom Bryce, Renee and Bernd Kim, 
Wally Clevisall, Jim Prescott, the Murdoff family, especially Charlotte. And I invite a moment for any prayers that you have this day. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. For we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Forever and ever. Amen. And now may God be with you this week in your comings and your goings, in your arrivals and in your leave takings. And wherever you go, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. We remain one in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.